This is a Friday Shoes production. The lesson is 3-2 in our books on page 148, and the target is I can estimate square roots. To estimate square roots, you're going to need to know your perfect squares. If you remember your perfect squares, those are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, and it goes on and on, but those are the perfect squares that are 10 down to 1. Let's take a look at this first one. I'm trying to estimate the square root of 83. The square root of 83 is going to be an irrational number. It's a non-terminating, non-terminating, excuse me, non-terminating and non-repeating decimal. It goes on forever. So to estimate the square root of 83, we need to find the perfect square that's above 83 and the perfect square that's below 83. And to do that, the largest perfect square less than 83 is 81. The square root of 81 is 9. And the smallest perfect square greater than 83 is 100. So the square root of 100 is 10. So we know that this number is going to be between 9 and 10 because the square root of 83 has got to be in between that. And if you look at the number line here, you can see the square root of 83 is between the square root of 81 and the square root of 100. The nice thing is we already know what 81 is. When you take the square root of it, it's 9. The square root of 100 is 10. But notice 83 is a lot closer to 81. So we are going to say that because the square root of 83 is between 9 and 10, and 83 is closer to 81 than 100, the best whole number estimate for the square root of 83 is going to be 9. So we'll say 9 is the closest. Let's take a look at number 2. Estimate the square root of 23.5 is the nearest whole number. Again, we need to find the closest one above 23.5 that's a perfect square and the perfect square that's closest below 23.5. Well, here they are. The largest perfect square less than 23.5 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. And the smallest perfect square greater than 23.5 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So what we say is 23.5 is between 4 and 5. Since 23.5 is closer to 25 than 16, the best whole number estimate for the square root of 23.5 would be 5. We would say, ah, it's closest to 5. That's called the whole number estimate. But you try these three. Come on back and see how you did. All right, square root of 35. Perfect square number above 35 is 36, and the one below it's going to be 25. Square root of 25, square root of 36. This is 5, this is 6. And what is 35 closest to? This one over here, 36. So we would say 6 would be a good estimate of the square root of 35. Take a look at the second one. Square root of 44.8. And what is the perfect square larger than 44.8 but closest to it? That's 49. Square root of 49 is 7. And then below would be 36. So 36, the square root is 6. Now we have to determine, is 36 closest to 44.8 or is 49 closest to 44.8? Well, this is actually closest. 44.8 is actually closest to 49. So therefore, we would say 7 would be a good whole number estimate because it's the nearest. And, of course, our last one here, square root of 170. Square root of 170. What's the one lowest or just below it? It's actually 169. Square root of 169 is 13. And then right above 170 is 196. You may not know this. I just happen to know this because I practiced this a few times. Square root of 196 is 14. Now, which is it closest to? Obviously, it's closest to the 169. So 13 would be a good estimate for the whole number of what square root of 169 would be closest to. All right, let's take a look at this last example here, three. It says the golden rectangle is found frequently in the Nautilus shell. And this is, this is very popular. It says the length of the longer side divided by the length of the shorter side is equal to, and I give you a little math problem there, one plus the square root of five all over two, or divide by two. Estimate this value. I kind of have a picture of them to show you the sides there. Well, what do we do first? Let's estimate the value of the square root of 5. They go through their math to show you that. That's going to be between 
the two numbers four and nine, which are perfect squares. And when you square root those, those are two and three, as you can see right on the bottom here. Then they say, if you take that and say, well, it's closest to two because four is closest to five, you estimate it out at two. And you do one plus two, you get three. You take three divided by two and you get 1.5. And that'd be your answer there. That is all we have on this particular lesson. It seems pretty short, but you can rewatch this video if you want, or take a look at some examples in the book. Or of course you can look at some of the personal tutor videos on the online textbook. And as usual, this has been a Friday Shoes production.